report, we're coming to item number seven on the agenda, which is consider approval of the annual financial compliance report for the year ending to uh, August 31st. Yes, board, thank you. Uh, the audit committee met uh, at 4.30 today and uh, was presented the audit report from Whitley Penn, uh, district auditors, and uh, once annually, this is a requirement for us to fulfill to present the financial compliance reports and the audit report uh, and be accepted by the board and then at that point those are then published with TEA and uh, Municipal Security Ratings Board and, and uh, a number of other entities as well as uh, uh, publishing the CAFR or the Com Comprehensive Annual Financial Report online on our website, um, which would happen the day after. So I'm going to turn it over to our controller, Grace Chang, and she'll work with others. General fund revenue increased $7.8 million, mainly in the local property tax collection due to a 2% increase in property value. Property tax provided 39% of the revenue, while state provided 56%. Enrollment declined by 732 students, which would have caused a decrease in state funding. However, the state revenue actually uh, slightly increased due to a one-time adjustment of $10.7 million for the Hurricane Harvey property value decline appropriation. This adjustment made for districts where the 2018 property value is less than the projected uh, projected value based on the average growth rate from 2014 to 2017. So for ALIP ISD, the average growth rate during that range of time was 7.7% um, versus our actual growth rate was 2.2%. Next, we will look at the general fund expenditure by major function. General fund expenditure increased $3.5 million, less than 1%. That increase related to the reclassification of $4.3 million expenditure for the Hurricane Harvey grants received from Texas Education Agency in 2017-18. In other words, those expenditure we have to book in the general fund this year because the, the grain was for last year. So last year we reclassified the expenditure to special revenue fund and this year they are in general fund. The education of students is labor intensive. So payroll comprised 89% of our general fund expenditure. Due to budget constraint, there was no payroll uh, pay increase or Cost of, cost of living adjustment in 1819. The difference between the summer projection of fund balance during the budget process uh, and the final result was only about $0.7 million. Next, we will take a look at the full service program. The full service fund balance at the end of the 2018-19 was $5.3 million. As of August 31st, 2019, the fund balance was kept below the uh, three months of average full service expenditure as required by the National School Lunch Program. The increase in federal revenues, about $2 million, 
was related to the increase in uh, free reduced student enrollment from 80% to 84%, and more school days in 1819, as we remember that there were, our school was closed for 10 days in 1718. Um, the increase in revenue was offset by additional food service costs for higher quality <coughs> food uh, provided to high school students and larger serving size at the intermediate school, middle school, and high school in order to meet the requirement for um, different age groups. Debt service fund had an ending fund balance of $23.4 million reserved for payment of debt service, of which $20 million is uh, in a reserve account to pay off the QZ bonds in 2024 and 27. The $1.3 million increase in the revenue related to that increase in property value, the 2% increase in property value. Um, as of August 31st, 2019, the fund balance was $0.9 million above the district's benchmark of one twelfth of preceding year's principal and interest expenditure. And district intended to use this reserve to, um, in coming years, to minimize the impact on tax rate from the 2015 bond record. Next, we will look at the revenue by source for governmental fund, which includes general fund, special revenue fund, debt service fund, and capital project fund. Property tax total is $203 million, provided 36% of the governmental fund's revenue. The increase of $12 million in state funding related to the, um, the biennial instruction material allotment <coughs> in summer 2019. Next slide shows the governmental fund expenditure by function for 1819. The total governmental <coughs> fund expenditure decreased by $12 million or 2% mainly in the capital projects. The $23 million decrease in capital projects was partially uh, offset by the increase in the instructional material, which I have just mentioned about. For 1819, the instruction cost ratio remains at 63.4%, same as last year. Administrative cost ratio was 0.0449 which was continuously lower than the state standard for district of our size. As of August 31st, 2019, the general fund reported an ending fund balance of $100.3 million, of which $77 million is available for, for spending at district's discretion. So that unassigned fund balance of $77 million represents 18% or 65 days of the general fund expenditure. It is within the range recommended by Texas Education Agency. The GMOA <coughs> and TASPA both, both recommended to keep at least two months of the expenditure. This chart shows the comparison with neighboring district for 1718 because the 1819 data is not available yet. As of August 31st, 2018, general fund had $94 million in total fund balance or 22% of the expenditure. At the end of this year, general fund ended with $100 million in total fund balance or 23% of the expenditure an increase from prior year. Actually, we have gone back to the uh, 2016 fund balance level. 
After talking about millions and millions of dollars, I would like to change a, another way to show how a dollar is spent on AU students. 62 cents are spent on teachers, instructional aids, and instructional materials. Another 36 cents are spent for support service, like um, counseling, campus administration, bus rides, food service, and well-maintained campus facilities. On the remainder two cents is for district level administration, central administration. At this time, I will turn to Mr. Lupe Garcia from Winnington, the independent auditors. Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Chambers, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to report to you the results of the district's fiscal year 2019 audit. Our report on the district's financial statements resulted in an unmodified opinion that's uh, otherwise known as a clean opinion. It's the highest level of assurance that can be given on a set of financial statements. So that's extremely important for these financial statements when they become public. That way the users of the financial statements can rely on the information as being materially correct and complete. Uh, we also issue a report on internal control over financial reporting and on internal control over compliance. I'm happy to report that our audit procedures did not identify any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, nor did we identify any question costs or any non-compliance that would be material to the financial statements. So clean reports all around uh, in regards to the audit of the financial statements and in the audit of the district's federal major programs. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take those questions at this time. Board. I think they asked quite a bit of them when we had the committee meeting. Am I present? Well, I have a question. What about all oh, the um, things said that we are approving the financial compliance report, but what we heard was the audit report. So, accepting the audit report uh, that was issued by Whitley Pan, which is an audit of and contains comprehensive annual financial report that the district uh, created. Uh, in some districts, the auditors create that for the district. And in our case, we, we've always created the comprehensive annual financial report and then the auditors audit it and it's it is the approval of both. Any other questions? I'm sorry, I'm trying to find. Uh, uh, I did also would like to, to say that um, the, um, the credit to another successful year goes to really some really great staff that we have in the business department and all the way out to the financial clerks and, and people who input purchase orders in the schools to purchasing department, warehouse, tracking uh, inventory and our transportation, tracking fuel and the, the, all the assets that are turned uh, into assets from the dollars that we receive from taxpayer funds and, and the staff has, again, done an amazing job uh, sometimes it's laborious to jump over the hoops to what it takes to get a PO out, but in the end, it pays off with books that you can rely on, and, and we've got really great staff like this. Okay, board, are there any other questions regarding the, what was presented to Ms. Butler? Was your question fully answered? Okay, if there are no other questions, is recommended that the Board of Trustees of, in, of the Ailey Independent School District consider. Am I going the right direction, Grace? Okay. I didn't see it on the screen, so I'll pull it in here. Is it recommended that the Board of Trustees to um, school district to consider approval of the audit report for the year ended August 31st, 2019. 
there any other discussions? No other discussion? I will accept the motion to approve the, the report. It's been moved by Ms. Keith, I have a second. I second that. Okay. It's been seconded by Ms. Brown. All in favor of the audit approval. Okay, that's why we keep going back to this. The motion was to approve the audit report. Which is inclusive, and that's why Ms. Butler brought it up. Absolutely, that it was worthy. Okay, so let me read both. Okay, because it's only one, guys, it's not two. So, okay, right. Okay, so all in favor of approving the annual finance and compliance report, which is a part of the audit approval. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Let the record show that five and one abstain. Oh, I'm sorry, four. I'm sorry. Four approved and one abstain. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, sir. At this time, item number eight.